This is all the climbing gear I have after 15 years of rock climbing. It represents a lifetime of putting money into the sport I love and all the little steps and missteps I made up the climbing progression ladder. I have training gear, self-rescue gear, top rope gear, sport gear, and last but absolutely not least, track gear. Let's dive into the questions you might be asking yourself. What exactly do I have? In what order did I buy it? And what mistakes did I make? And how much did it all cost? Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My trail name is Harmonica, but you can call me Daniel. Let's talk climbing gear. But to start with, rock climbing is, for those who don't know, a very complex sport with a lot of sub-disciplines that all require a lot of very complex specialized gear. You have trad climbing, you have big blowing, you have soloing, aiding, sport, top rope, competitive climbing, and all those disciplines demand their own gear to the point that most of the disciplines I mentioned even have their own shoes. It can be a bit bewildering for people just wanting to check the sport out, so let's start with the discipline most climbers are first introduced to, myself included. Indoor. Indoor climbing is a great start to the sport because it's a very low barrier to entry. What gear do you really need for it? Short answer, none. Climbing gyms have gear hire systems, so usually for a small fee they can give you shoes, they can give you a harness. But the gear they hire out is usually terrible, so you'll generally want to make some purchases early on to make yourself love the sports just a little more. First one, climbing shoes. You go from really, really cheap beginner shoes that start at around $70, those won't be much better than the gym rental shoes, but at least you won't be sharing them with a hundred other people, to super professional, super expensive, super painful shoes like the Scarpa Drago. They're all made for different purposes. Downturn shoes are made for steep angles, stiff shoes are made for small holds. I'd suggest starting off with a more multi-purpose shoe that won't break your budget like my most recent pair, the Scarpa Helix. More important than the shoes you buy is its size. You want the shoe to be properly tight, so your foot should be scrunched up in there as long as it's not too painful. The first pair of shoes I bought was way too big and climbing in them felt ridiculous, I was slipping everywhere, so since then I've settled for smaller sizes. Climbing shoe selection is complex and I may make a full video about it soon, but we have a lot to cover, so moving on. Your second purchase should be chalk and a suitable chalk bag. I don't see beginner climbers use chalk often enough and it can really make a difference. You'll want to buy Climber's Chalk, which is made of magnesium carbonate and a lot better at drying your hands than normal chalk. Uh, the chalk bag itself isn't so important, I just got this cheap one from Black Diamond. You can also sew your own if you want the bag to be custom made. There's a huge range of chalk based products out there, and I got sucked into buying a few myself, including a chalk block and some liquid chalk as well. Liquid chalk lasts far longer on your hands than normal chalk does. Really though, you can just get away with buying some basic simple climbing chalk, chuck that into your chalk bag and it's going to do the trick. Your next purchase, if your gym has roped climbing, will be a harness. People have a lot of opinions about harnesses and some say you need to get a top quality harness right away, but I've found that realistically a harness is just a harness. I've used gym harnesses exclusively growing up and nowadays I still use a cheap old harness. As long as it has gear loops and is comfortable enough, it's going to do the job. Those are the most important items and the only ones you'll really need if you aren't going outdoors. Other purchases I made in my gym climbing days included finger tape, a range of shoes, a tennis ball to massage my back with, and I also made myself a fingerboard for some light home training. If we're being invited by your friends to go outdoors, one more purchase you'd want to make is a climbing helmet, such as the Black Diamond Half Dome. Let's say you're like me at age 14 and want to do the same sort of ropes climbing you're doing in the gym, but in the great outdoors instead. Well, you're in luck. A lot of popular climbing clips actually have bullards on the top of them, so all you'll mainly need to climb them is a dynamic rope you can set up at the cliff top. Why dynamic? Because dynamic ropes stretch under load, so if you fall on one, you won't snap your spine. Now, you do want to buy a few more things to go with that rope, the most important one being a belay device. Divide it into two types tubular ones like this black diamond ATC guide and assisted braking ones, the most popular by far being the Petzl Grigri. Assisted braking devices are the ones to buy if you have any big concerns about safety. They can lock onto the rope kind of automatically, but if you really want to go cheap, a simple ATC will still do the job 10 times out of 10. One thing to keep in mind for later is that you can do double strand repels with the ATC and not the Grigri, which is why I still have both. 
To attach the belay device to your harness, you want a locking carabiner. I actually have four. You also never want the rope to be running straight through whatever anchor you're using, because the rope will run over the cliff edge and the rope drag will be horrendous. So you should buy a static rope to complete the top rope kit. A 20 meter static will be fine for most situations. I have a super long static, it's actually 40 meters long and I've never needed most of its length. Uh, chuck in a couple of steel screw gate carabiners or quick links. Get a rope protector and a rope bag to extend the lifetime of your gear. Take a course on how to set up a top rope if you don't have a friend to teach you and you're good to go. You need to retire ropes periodically, which has led to me getting another two. Sport climbing is a hugely popular part of rock climbing, especially in Europe, and after you've bought a top rope kit, you really don't need much else to start sport leading. For those not familiar with it, sport climbing is where you climb from the ground up and every couple meters you clip the rope into the rock using quick draws. Yes, you'll take big falls in sport, but don't worry, you'll get used to it. To start sport leading, you'll need what's called a safety or personal anchor system. At its cheapest, it's just a sling with a couple of knots in it, but I use a Metolius Alpine Paz instead. It doesn't matter as long as the length is somewhat adjustable. You use the safety to clip yourself hard into fixed anchors to clean them. You also want some quick draws. The eight I bought have done well for most of the routes I've climbed, but depending on how tall the cliffs are in your area, you might want to buy some more. The ones I have use Wiregate carabiners, which are generally a couple bucks cheaper, but solid gates can often be better since they clip more securely and don't have this hook. Depending on whether the people who bolted your local crack are cheap skates or not, you may also want to buy a few bolt plates to slide over the top of carrot bolts. Wire gates can slip out of bolt plates, so you'll want to use solid gates if climbing with them. So let's say you're sport climbing and think, damn, I wish I was spending like twice as much money on climbing gear. Well, you're in luck because track climbing exists. Track climbing is basically a way of ignoring those boring bolted roots and sticking pieces of metal into cracks instead to protect yourself which is about as safe as it sounds, but the amount of money you can spend on tons of gear that will make that process safer is huge. If you haven't bought them yet, now is the time to invest in prusik loops, which are basically bits of cords that can be used to climb ropes in emergencies and also make repelling using a belay device a bit safer. Past that, you want a couple racks of nuts, which are really as simple as they look. You can stick them into cracks to protect yourself and as many spring-loaded camming devices or cams as you can afford. They're about a hundred bucks each, but each one will make your trial leading a fair bit easier and safer. To help your secondary remove gear, you will also want a nut tool. You also want to buy some alpine draws, which are basically slings with two carabiners attached to them, uh, which you can extend to reduce rope drag. Alpine draws will also tug a lot less on gear than sport draws will, which will help keep your climbing safe. Some super long slings or cordlets will allow you to build and equalize anchors. Now, this is all you really need to start trad leading, and this is what I and my friend bought. But the thing about trad is the more gear you have, the safer and more fun it is. And I found myself going back to the store over and over to buy random bits of gear. Right now, I have eight normal alpine slings, five double length slings, a 360 centimeter sling, a 240 centimeter sling, a cordlet, six wild country quick draws, a full rack of black diamond stoppers, five offset stoppers, a double rack of wild country nuts, eight black diamond C4 cams, three ball nuts, five hexes, three tri cams, and a rack of on brand brass RPs, and 44 non locking carabiners to tie it all together. If all that seems like a lot, I could keep on buying more stuff. I haven't bought my own gear for aid climbing, that would demand a ton more cams, aid ladders, ascenders. I haven't bought anything for big walling. I would need a haul bag for that, maybe a portal ledge too. There are so many avenues you can go down with climbing and so much gear you can spend for each and every one. So let's answer the question you might be asking yourself this whole time. How much money did I spend on all this gear? All my personal gear is worth about $1,000 with most of that being in shoes. Top rope gear is worth about $1,500, most of that being in the three dynamic ropes. 
My sport gear is only about 250, while my tri gear is worth a combined total of about $3,800. Add another $1,500 for the home bouldering wall I built, and the $500 for miscellaneous gear, and we have about $7,400 of climbing gear now in my possession. You might be thinking, that's a ridiculous amount to spend on climbing gear, especially since it has no resale value, really. But the truth is, I only paid less than $3,000 for all of this. And that comes down to a few simple tricks. First of all, I'm listing the common regular retail price for all this gear. It's much cheaper to buy this gear in bulk or on sale or from smaller companies at wholesale prices. Second of all, a lot of this gear isn't mine. I bought the trad rack together with one of my climbing partners, but we still arrange things so that we have the gear when we need it. Find friends, join climbing clubs, and the amount you'll need to spend to participate in the unbelievably cool sport of climbing really goes down a lot. And when it's time to buy gear, take one step at a time and ultimately you'll find yourself with all the gear you will ever need. That'll do it for today. I have more outdoor videos like this coming soon, so if you want to see them, stay tuned. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments down below and I will answer them. See you next time.